Oh, rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. What's Trending presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. We mentioned the coaching carousel in full effect. Round and round we go through college basketball. And the biggest notable stop of the offseason probably happened last night yep. when John Calipari reportedly is finalizing to take the head coach or contract, rather to take the head coaching job at Arkansas, which leaves the Kentucky job open. I mean, wild. You leave Kentucky to go to another SEC school, and it's Arkansas. In conference. Unbelievable. Well, uh, BYU's Mark Pope, you may have heard this, uh, played at Kentucky. I heard that. Won a national yeah. championship yeah. for Rick Pitino at Kentucky. Wow, that's amazing. And not surprising, it was included in ESPN uh, reporter Jeff Borzello's list of potential candidates for the Kentucky job. Okay, it's interesting. Uh, in other coaching news, BYU assistant coach Cahill Fennell is taking the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley head coaching job. That is a fact. The Mark Pope thing is all speculatory. Cahill Fennell is indeed leaving BYU. So, Jerem, when you consider a little bit of mm, speculation over here with Mark Pope and what is actually happening with Cahill Fennell, what do these coaching changes mean for the immediate future of BYU basketball? I don't believe that Mark is a top candidate for the Kentucky job. Certainly he's going to be on the list because he played at Kentucky, because he played in the NBA, and because he's been a successful college coach. He, he should be on those lists. I don't think he's near the top of those lists. You look at Borzello's list. Like, Dan Hurley might win a second consecutive national title with UConn. He's way up there, right? Billy Donovan is with the Bulls. Jay Wright has retired but won two natties with Villanova. That's a certain level, right? Tommy Lloyd in Arizona, amazing. Nate Oates. Alabama. Um, the, the one thing with this list, you got to win in the NCAA tournament, right? That's the only real blight on Mark Pope's resume at the moment. He's done a lot of great things and will continue to do amazing things. Mark Pope has got to win in the NCAA tournament to be a more viable candidate for a job like this. The moment he does, he is. Like if BYU had won one game in the NCAA tournament, that's incredible. Like look what Danny Sprinkle did. Took Utah State to one win in the NCAA tournament. Boom. Washington job. Like, Goes from Montana State to Utah, Utah State. State. Now he's a Washington. In a two-year span. It, it does require – and he probably had that deal locked in even if he didn't win that first-round game. But, like, winning that first-round game really cements your spot in that. BYU had an awesome year. Don't get me wrong. Fit, let's repeat what we already know, but let's just say it out loud. Fifth in the Big 12. Number 12 in net. Ken Palm number 18 right now. Amazing season. But you need to win in the tourney. So – I don't believe that Mark's going to get the Kentucky job. We'd be lying if we'd acted like he didn't want it at some point, given that he played there. It's near the top of uh, the coaching game. It's one of the blue bloods. It's a huge opportunity at some point in the future. Yeah. But you got to win in the NCAA tournament. So I don't believe that Mark is a top candidate there. He's certainly a candidate. But how about um, one source, a betting source, giving this him is the, the day and age we live in. best odds of getting the job. There are odds for everything, including who's most likely to become Kentucky's next head coach. Jay Drew tweeted this out. Fifth best odds to get it. That actually surprises me that he is that high on the list. Um, given, again, NCAA, been to the tourney, would have been in 2020. Let's count that. Three of the first five years, but you got to win in the tourney. What does Kentucky want? They want wins in the tourney. They just lost to Oakland in the first round, so they're, they're not going to hire a guy that didn't win in the in the tournament at least recently. So Kentucky, at some point, Mark will be like that guy, Spence, when BYU makes like a Sweet 16 run, but it's not right now. The short list for Kentucky right now, because of who they are and what they want, which yeah. is national championship winning coaches. That is, that is who Kentucky's fan base is looking at right now. Who's won a national championship? Okay, let's start with Who can take guys. us there right now? Scott Drew has done that, which is why he's, according to these odds, most likely. Like, Scott Drew has been there, done that. Yeah. Jay Wright would be nice. I don't know if he's going to come out of retirement. I don't think so. That feels like a stretch, yeah. but he's won a national championship. And then one, two. Bruce Pearl is interesting because he hasn't won a national championship. He's been to... A bunch of Final Fours, but I don't. I think he's an Auburn guy, and so to me, like Billy Donovan is a guy who was the last to go back to back of any team with Florida. 
So Billy Donovan takes Florida to back He's to back in 06, 07. He's with the Chicago Bulls right now. It's like, okay, how much money do we need to pay you to coax you away out of the NBA to come back with your national championship pedigree and get Kentucky back where you want Kentucky Eight to be? Eight or ten or twelve, yeah. Yeah. So, like, it's it's Scott Drew, it's Jay Wright, it's Billy Donovan right there. And if those guys won't, then maybe you get to, like, the Bruce Pearls and maybe... No, Richard it, Pitino, aka okay, the son who maybe, was at maybe Rick Richard Pitino's Pitino, son at New Mexico. He's done an incredible job in New Mexico. Like, because he's a Pitino, there's a little asterisk there. Sure. Yeah. It, it's interesting. But I, I think they should start with guys that have already won national championships. That's who Kentucky is. Yeah. That's what they want to be. They want it immediately. Yeah. So, and like Mark Pope above Kelvin Sampson on this list is interesting. Well, I mean, he does have the Kentucky tie, and Kentucky fans would probably feel a little bit of natural, innate camaraderie un- with like the understanding of like, oh, it's a Kentucky guy. Like he he played for here. sure. Just I I think Mark needs some NCAA tournament wins. I at I, least a win. Don't disagree. Like, yeah. and so- then he'll be like legit, legit Kentucky guy at some point maybe like you make one sweet 16 run you're in the mix but do kentucky fans and do the kentucky board of regents if you know some of these national championship guys say no i'm good i'm staying here if it got to mark pope like you could understand how they'd be like well i know that he doesn't have the tournament wins but look what he did at byu like with a bunch of guys, they were expected to finish 13th. Sure. A lot of, lot of good there, no doubt. In the Big 12. I'm just and saying, they finished fifth. Kentucky, Ken, like, Kentucky is another level, bro. And, and so they require how many guys, winning in the tournament. How many guys would say no? You know, would it require to say oh, no? Oh, I don't think. Oh, oh, I don't know. Before you get to a few guys down the list, right? Yeah. I, I don't, how, I don't know how much. Kentucky Sports Nation will figure that how out. How much loyalty is there in college basketball? It doesn't feel like there's a ton. No. <laughs> No, it's it, in the business world. There's not a, a ton of loyalty, right? Uh, and and Mark has uh, you know sought opportunities elsewhere, but stayed at BYU. And that's not, I don't think, less of him for interviewing for other jobs and having things match. For, that's part of the deal this is here. The American no, dream. B, BYU is uh, lucky to have a guy as good as Mark Pope, which is awesome. And uh, I I don't see him bouncing, but rarely do you. We didn't see Calipari bouncing yesterday. See, I didn't today. think it was going to happen Arkansas this fast. I, I, yeah. mean, I, thought, I thought Coach Cal would be at Kentucky for at least one more year. But apparently he was very unhappy, and Kentucky fans are super upset. That well, they're unhappy with it, so it's mutually got unhappy. It looks like, yeah. So, like, this was a mutual <laughs> parting, and it's kind of brilliant by uh, Kentucky to do this to just because now they don't owe him anything. Like it was like thirty-two million dollars that was remaining. Like the, he, the buyout was huge. He, yeah. he would be due if they fired him, and so Arkansas to come in and swoop him up. Now Kentucky doesn't owe a dime to Coach Cal, and they can go get their next guy yeah. at Kentucky. So there's a lot more money to deal with, which could be that much more enticing to a guy like Scott Drew or Billy Donovan or maybe Jay Wright. What what's the yeah. number uh, that's big enough to pull Jay Wright out of retirement? Yeah, 14. I don't, oh, I don't man. Know. That, okay, let's talk about Cahill Fennell. So, this is actual, actual thing that's happening. Yeah, so Cahill Fennell, uh, you know, takes head coaching job, which, congrats. I'm super happy for him. He deserves it. You don't blame any assistants for taking head coaching jobs. You know, he's a uh, Texas Rio Grande Valley. Tremendous assist coach the last two years. Uh, players really liked him. Good recruiter. Uh, has BYU's defense playing really well. Okay, they were... They were uh, 60 in Ken Palm. You say, yeah, 60, I don't know. Tied for third in the last five years under Mark Pope. That's in the Big 12, dog. Like, I know. I if know. that's in the WCC, that version, BYU's top 40, right? Um, I would think. So he did a nice job. Uh, bummer to lose a guy of that quality, but assistant coaches uh, run through every couple of years. That's how it goes. Uh, BYU's been lucky to retain Cody Figure and Nick Robinson for as long as they have. Now they have an opening. They actually have another opening. BYU chose not to fill all the spots last year they had four they could have had five you could have had one who didn't travel mm-hmm. with you they chose not to so BYU if they want um they can have two more assistant coach hires but best of luck to Cahill uh, from from what we've heard from players and and different recruits and whatnot is that uh and signees eventually like they really like it he's the reason that a few guys came to BYU yeah so hopefully they're still all in on uh everything because sometimes you attach to a guy right when you're a, um, a sunny. But, yeah, Cahill's awesome, and uh, best of luck for him. Man. 
I'm a little concerned about the vacancy that he leaves. Um, he's not a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but embraced the culture, embraced the values, the honor code, and such a good recruiter and helping guys that maybe also aren't members of the church want to come to BYU and be able to handle like the rigors of the academics and the honor code and still play high level basketball. Like he, he bridges a gap and Cody Feger does that as well. Like he's in that unique role, but I mean, we're talking about an African-American man in this role that helped a bunch of players feel comfortable at BYU, not to mention he's a great defensive coach and he was the defensive coordinator for BYU. And the numbers took a massive uptick from the last year in the WCC to where BYU was in year one of the Big 12. And so those, those are big shoes to fill. No. Like, like who's, who's the guy, who's the next guy that can come in and help fill at least some of that void? Like, I'm, I'm concerned. Like, I, there are recruits that are like, man, Cahill is serious. He's like the reason I want to go to a place like BYU, like that guy right there. And so to not have him in the fold anymore, like that's, uh, that's a loss. And so I'm, I'm a little concerned about, you know, if, if BYU has all the buy-in from all the guys because a dude of his caliber leaves deservedly so for a head coaching job. But, I mean, yeah, it's not as simple as just like, oh, well, he leaves and we'll just plug and play and it's all good. It doesn't work that way. Um, and so to his credit, he's earned it. I, I'd be a huge uh, UT whatever, Rio Grande Valley fan. Yeah, like yeah. We, we are all fans of Cahill Fennell, and we hope that he does super well. But that, that leaves us somewhat of a significant void on the coaching staff. And you're going to ask more of Nick Robinson and Cody Feger. And, and hopefully BYU can go and find somebody that can be a great recruiter and yep. somebody that can really help BYU in the portal. Because I think Cahill helped BYU in the portal a ton. And he's very soft-spoken. He's very understated about yeah. it. Yeah. But the other coaches will be like, oh, dude, he was huge for us. Yep. So who's that next guy going to be? Yep. Um, so that actual bit of news will impact BYU. It's, <laughs> it's a storyline going into this first part of the offseason, right? Yeah. Football and basketball, like it's kind of over. There are, oh, a number, there are a number of storylines like Jackson Robinson's return, uh, the transfer portal opening up, how many guys can BYU bring back in the core, what do they do about the assistant coach, and then you throw in the football storylines of you know two new assistant coaches and a quarterback battle Bruins. We got some stuff. There's some this stuff. Off season, By the way, sure. uh, Texas Rio Grande Valley, the Vaqueros, which is oh like yeah, the Cowboys, Cowboys. The, the Mexican Cowboys. Cowboys. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Vaqueros. <laughs>